there are several methods that scientists use to, to try to get a good idea of the evaporative rate or to measure evaporation per se. The two primary methods are using an evaporation pan or you can use an empirical equation. It's a mathematical equation. To estimate evaporation by using empirical equations, you need to measure a lot of different components and elements of the atmosphere. So you have to actually measure humidity, you have to measure temperature, you have to measure the atmospheric pressure, you have to measure the wind speed, and for some equations you have to measure solar radiation. So you take all these parameters, you plug them into the equation, and you come up with an estimate of what the evaporation rate is. Kind of one of the holdbacks from using this method is you have to maintain multiple sensors at a weather station. Weather stations can be costly and it can be time consuming to maintain all these different sensors at the weather station. Evaporation pans are a widely accepted method for measuring evaporation. And this is what the Brazos River Authority uses to measure evaporation at its reservoirs. Evaporation pans are typically about four feet in diameter and 10 inches um, in height. Um, these are called class A evaporation pans. There's actually multiple different types of evaporation pans, uh, but the one that's typically used is the class A pan. And that's the one that, that, that the Brazos River Authority uses at its reservoirs. The loss of water from the pan is measured periodically. Most people measure it daily. We measure it daily. Then an adjustment factor has to be applied. This is called the pan coefficient. To, to actually estimate the amount of evaporation from the lake. This is necessary because the pan is not an exact model of the lake and it's not near as efficient at storing heat energy. So you're gonna have a, a much higher evaporative rate out of the pan than you are the lake. So that's why you have to apply this, this pan coefficient to actually get a good idea of what's leaving the reservoir. A larger reservoir tends to be more energy efficient and can store heat energy better than a smaller reservoir. And so uh, typically for a larger reservoir, it's a little bit more efficient and it'll experience less evaporation than a smaller reservoir.